And here we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly Jenkins infrastructure uh, meeting. So today we are six. Yay! More people to the infra. I'm so happy. Um, so we have Mark Waite, Basil Crow, Bruno Verarten, Stéphane Merle, Hervé Lemeur, and Hi, Damien du Portal. Um, so uh, let's get started with the announcement first. Um, so the weekly has been released as usual. There is still the Docker image to be published. We'll talk about that later. Should be done in a few hours. Um, most of the checklist is uh, complete. Uh, I see Mark that you're adding a word about LTS baseline. Can you? Can I let you explain? Sure. Yeah. So the Tim Jacom has raised the question in the Jenkins developer list. The LTS baseline has not yet been selected uh, for the what would usually be the June LTS. Uh, it's being discussed on the developer list. Uh, I had proposed about a week ago uh, that we'd actually intentionally, or maybe it was two weeks ago now, that we intentionally slip the selection of the LTS baseline two weeks to or four weeks to allow us more time to resolve regressions. Uh, a number of regressions have been resolved, a very nice set have been resolved, but there are still a few that I feel like, hey, we should really consider fixing these before we choose the weekly baseline. But Tim's the release officer and that, that really is his decision to make. Uh, we, we defer to him, we try to persuade, et cetera, but as the release officer, he, he gets to make that decision. So right now we're one week off cycle from the LTS baseline. It would have been selected last week per the usual calendar. Now the question is, what do we do next? Do we choose 345 that was delivered today, 344 that was delivered last week, or wait one more week and try to get a few more fixes in? That was all Thanks. I had, Damien. Thanks, that's clear. Any question? One, two, three, okay. Um, I don't have any other announcements. Do you have some folks? Nope, okay. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, let's cover as usual the amount of tasks that were closed or done during the past milestone, e.g. during the last week. Uh, so we had a bunch of minor tasks that we won't cover in details that are usual operationals, uh, people wanting to be opt-in or opt-out of plugin maintenance, um, DNS updates on some records. Uh, just a few words. So uh, you have the direct link to the milestone with the close issue if you want to check the details. Um, I'm gonna just cover some major elements. We were able to fix issues on the Packer image generation. So as a reminder, this is a process used to generate the templates of all the virtual machines we use as agent on CI Jenkins IO. It's a centralized repository that provide for the Ubuntu and Windows lines that try to provide the same templates. Either you are, we are using Azure or AWS machine uh, that might also build Docker container in the future to be sure we have the same set of toolings, whatever kind of agent we have. Right now it's only virtual machines. That process was failing due to a GPG issue that was fixed. That was uh, a minor but blocking inconvenience. Uh, that allowed us to deliver new template version. Uh, two minor version uh, were deployed in the past two days. So now we have the latest Git and Git LFS patches. Uh, Git LFS patch uh, was very important for Windows image because it was fixing a CV. Uh, and the latest GDK 17 from Adoptium has now been deployed on these images earlier today. So if there is an issue, don't say it's as usual to open a desk issue, we can roll back quite uh, quite quickly on this one. Is there any question, remark, or things unclear on that topic? No. Okay. Uh, a word of thanks a lot, Herbie and Stefan, for contributing on the VPN tasks. So as usual, every six months, we have a regular task to update the CRL, the certificate revocation list of our infrastructure VPN. 
that was a good opportunity for knowledge sharing and improvement. So the goal was to let two members of the team that are not Olivier, Marc, or I, who usually do that task. So they did that in complete autonomy. So thanks for taking care of that, for the improvement on the documentation. And that was a good opportunity for taking care of VADEC renewal. I mean, it's not as if VADEC had the needs to access the VPN. <laughs> So he confirmed that he was able to go forward. So thanks, folks. Um, a word on issues, Jenkins IO, that has been upgraded without further notice to the latest LTS. Sounds like we had a miscomprehension with the Linux Foundation folks. So I've written that on the issues, but I'm saying that a lot for uh, everyone there. When they propose a date time, it's PST, West Coast. <laughs> Good to know, because until we realized that it was that time zone, the team already proceeded and the person in charge of communication was uh, off the day we should have delayed. So better to know next time. <laughs> For once, it's not European centered, so it's not that bad. Uh, so they, they updated to the latest LTS, our Jira instance hosted at issues.jenkins.io. There have been 10 minutes of unavailability. So sorry for our users because we weren't able to let them know. So I hope no one lost a comment. If that's, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, that's something that happened yearly, that LTS update that was uh, triggered by the check inside the instance. So everything so far so good based on team uh, analysis. He was able to finish the update in the U administration UI. I haven't seen any user complain. So either no one can post to Jira or it's working as expected, <laughs> or we haven't seen any problem. Questions so far on these two picks? And for me. Uh, Digital Ocean cluster has been recreated, is now used by CI Jenkins IO. Thanks a lot, Stefan, for the support on that area. That was an opportunity to go to Kubernetes 1.21 starting the, the upgrade campaign. Um, we applied what has been described on the associated issue. Uh, the credentials have been rotated everywhere as expected. Uh, that has been documented and uh, we have restricted the area. So if we have another, let's say suspicious activity that will be way easier to track next time. Pipeline library, we just walked around some improvements. Uh, thanks, Basil, for starting a big cleanup of that Groovy code. That's a good learning opportunity also. So we spent some time uh, with Stefan last week and today around the Groovy string interpolation fixes. Um, so I won't go into details, but uh, we are available to help, but just think about that element in the future. Uh, a lot of, uh, I learned a lot of from your pull request as well, basically. So thanks again. Uh, and also thanks for to, to Daniel Beck who helped us to track an issue about tags of Docker images not being built because we were creating normal Git tag and the Git tag has the same by default timestamp as the commit that it points to. So we had some version that were hold on the repository where we weren't upgrading the principal branch. Now, thanks to the, help, to the analysis of Daniel and the help of Hervé on implementing that part, we are creating annotated tag that are timestamped at the day where the tag is created, leading on more deterministic build behaviors. Finally, uh, infra report generation, which is used by the repository permission updater. That's a regular job that takes care of updating the authorization and account and permission on GitHub repository for plugin developers and Artifactory uh, has been fully migrated to Infra CI. It was running on trusted CI before, creating a lot of uh, chaos there and costing a lot of money. So now it's running on pods, on one CPU, one gigapods that cost almost nothing. And so far, so good. Uh, took some time to compare that with the help of some contributor. If anything is wrong uh, related to your permission as plugin or contributor developers, please reach out to the infra team on the help desk. Uh, we might have broken elements, 
So far, the reports were exactly the same during the past five days. Uh, the rest of the issues are, um, let's say, minor issues. So I propose that we go on the work in progress. The first one is uh, one big one. We had uh, um, outage on CI Jenkins IO last week. Uh, so initially, I invited Basil to do the post mortem today. I'm really sorry because I messed up me, my agendas during the weekend. So my proposal is that we do a separated session altogether that should be publicly hosted to focus on the topic of the post mortem because we are not mature enough as a team on the post mortem exercise. So we could totally improve and learn from Basil. And there is a technical, a set of technical elements, short term, medium term, and long term that should benefit the whole Jenkins core or at least some plugins. So that's interesting to discuss that, to share that knowledge altogether. That will be the goal of such uh, element. Um, so what happened briefly is that we had a, a wave of builds. We had so, a bunch, like more than 1,500 builds waiting in the queue on CI Jenkins IO. The root cause was we reached again the Docker Hub rate limiting. So each of these builds was trying to start a container, but while trying to pull the associated image from the Docker Hub, we were API rate limited because we reached our authenticated account limits, which is a six hour windows that change uh, and reset the count. We are in discussion with Docker. They are okay to let all of our organization and account to be part of their uh, open source program. That would allow us to have more than 5,000 pull per hour instead of 200 per six hours today. That will be a great improvement that should avoid that thing to happen again. There are other solutions, of course, using local proxy, using other registry. But right now, that was the root cause. Then CI Jenkins IO was completely, completely uh, lagging. Uh, some build, the, bin, the builds were taking over, but it seems that the UI and the logs were not updated to the reality of what was happening. The builds were taking place and while the UI said uh, the agent were stopped or paused or suspended and no, absolutely no error logs, no warning logs, no messages around this behavior. That was really weird uh, to understand. I think uh, the team has reached its maximum knowledge of Jenkins. That's why we need, uh, let's say, the professional experts like Basil uh, to, to step into there to help us because we need that help to fully understand what is going on, to be able then to decide what to do in short term if it happens again in the next days and what to do in long term to fix that behaviors. Because if we have that behaviors, other users of Jenkins for sure will have this. We are not exceptional, we are not specific. We just have a big Jenkins instance, but that's not the biggest. So let's say eat our own dog food and go forward. Uh, I really want to thank Stefan and Basil for the help you provided on that. That helped me a lot. So many, many thanks for it. That was really, really nice to have you on board. So Damien, one of, one of my concerns, and you didn't mention it, so I'm, I'm wondering if maybe I'm thinking in a different area, we've had an ongoing issue for the last 18 months or 24 months of um, agents that disconnect at random, uh, cloud agents. Did that have any impact on this or, or not as far as you could tell? The, the random disconnects of agents at unpredictable times, was, is that unrelated to this? I cannot say I'm sure and unsure, okay. but uh, I haven't seen these messages on the logs of the impacted. Uh, I see. The, okay. The bomb, Thank you. Yep. The, the logs were about uh, agents not being allocated. Okay. All right. So they were agent allocation failures, not jobs uh, due to disconnect, not, not job failures exactly. due to disconnect of the agent. Okay. But to, to be more precise, I think both issues do exist, but they aren't. Mm -hmm. Uh, caused by each other they're so they're they're both existing but separate issues got it okay thank yeah. you thanks for the clarity puzzle 
Thanks a lot. Yeah, Th that's better to clarify my English. Might not be always the best, so don't use it to, to, uh, to help. So that that's all for today on that area. We are still work in progress. That issue is still open because we need that post-mortem to happen and we need to decide on tasks to improve the situation. Is that okay for everyone? Does everyone agree on that area? Just raise your hands. I see you in the video. If you yeah. are okay, <laughs> don't yeah. raise your hand. If you I already um, I already wrote a quick document, and I think there's five different issues that I saw during that uh, mm -hmm. incident. So I, I have a draft of what I think the short, medium, and long-term uh, action items are for each of those five issues, and I'd be happy to discuss that at the meeting cool. that you're proposing. I can share okay. that. I can yes. share that ahead of time if you'd like as well. Uh, however, uh, the best you prefer. If you want to to polish your draft before sharing it publicly, no problem. Uh, ideally, if we could share have the draft before the meeting, so everyone can read it and code yes. the meeting with the brain already wired. Thanks a lot. Many thanks for that. Oh, where really should important. I where should I post that? Um, if it if you want it to be publicly and you don't mind directly yeah. on the associated issue, let me okay. have the link there. That, that's the issue you opened on the L desk. Sure. Okay, um, sounds good. Sounds good to you? Yes, thank you. Many thanks, Basil. Anything else on that topic? So I'm going forward on the other topics that are work in progress and that we should keep going uh, for the next week or decide if we block them in favor of other tasks. Um, there is an upcoming issue with the Docker image tags, LTS, whatever, LTS something, that are not published for other platform than uh, AM, uh, Intel. Uh, it's almost fixed. We found the root cause that was a, a uh, chaotic branch being built in production on trusted CI that should not have been, that was building with an old Docker version, overriding the manifests, the modern manifest version to new ones. So it was indirectly making unavailable the ARM and CPUs. So team uh, took care of uh, the root cause. And we have a set of uh, shell script madness to be sure that now we check for each version on the latest, let's say uh, a few weeks before, we check that they are published at platform level and all the tags level now. So that should be almost there. Um, it's blocking the availability of today's weekly Docker image, of course, because that script of publication must be fixed and fully working. Uh, so it's continue on the next milestone. If anyone is interested in contributing or helping me, don't hesitate to manifest yourself on the associated issue that you can find on the milestone. So we've got a an LTS that I believe is scheduled for next week, Damien. Are you comfortable mm -hmm. that we'll be OK delivering, that we'll be ready for, for instance, the next weekly on May Tuesday, May 3rd? Yes. OK, great. Um, we have the Kubernetes upgrade campaign to 1.21. So it's managed by Hervé and Stefan. Uh, uh, so we decided two weeks ago that uh, Hervé is leading and Stefan is shadowing Hervé as a matter of knowledge transfer. Initially, it should have been all the cluster without me uh, due to last week uh, chaos. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I stole your task, folks. But now there is the whole AKS that should happen tomorrow morning. Is that correct, Hervé? Yes. Cool. So I let you folk manage that part. Thanks a lot. Um, so we keep that for the next milestone, of course. Uh, Stefan and I are working on the Docker Hub credential. Uh, we have multiple areas there, documenting the different accounts, securing the different accounts, ensuring the open source program is applied for the rate limiting and fixing the pipeline library so each controller of the infrastructure use one credential for pull and another credential for push to separate consent and rights. So that's a, an ongoing task that should continue this week. Did I forget anything, Stefan, or is that? You, you, you can specify that we, we may use uh, um, 
credential with read only for pool to avoid any uh, yeah. tolling credentials and pushing yeah. wrong image. Yeah, good catch. That's a recent Docker Hub feature released two weeks ago. Now the it. free accounts are able to have a read only token. That feature was uh, uh, only for enterprise or paid account uh, last month. And now we can use it for free, even without the open source program. So if you have a free Docker on a account, you can do that on your own. So that's the good news. There is read, write, and read, write, delete. They have four or five sets of permission. That's really useful. Good catch, Stephen. Thanks. So we continue working on that. Uh, Stefan, on your own, you have to continue working on uh, migrating, rating the Jenkins IO application from the current AWS VM to a Kubernetes uh, system. Sorry for the delay. No problem. That's a non-priority task, but a good knowledge transfer. So we delay to that milestone. You were ill and off most of the past two weeks, so <laughs> that makes sense. Sorry. Um, the GDK 17 campaign that has been updated on the tools for CI Jenkins IO and uh, virtual machines. So now uh, I have two points. First, the container agents that are still uh, partly built by ourselves and partly uh, built from the community. Um, that's related to another task, Hervé, uh, that was building our own Windows container inside the Infra CI. I, do you want to? Do you think that it's possible for the next milestone to start working on that one? Yes? Yes, yes. So the GDK 17 campaign is parallel to that task at the same area. Uh, I don't know if someone volunteers to track all the Docker images we have running. That might be, the Linux are easy and the Windows might be a more a bit more uh, slow because related to external pull requests to the Jenkins CI, but we have to track them. Is there anyone volunteering to that task or should I take it? Okay, I take it then. <laughs> and the last one is the add an email alias for press. So that one is blocked and somewhere else we are waiting for the CDF to answer us. So I propose that we don't put that one on the upcoming milestone. Sounds good for you, everyone? Yes. OK. If you don't mind, I had two two small points to add to this yep. agenda. Um, I want to give an update on two things that I was doing. Um, one is um, memory analysis of uh, core and pull request builds. So I've recently checked in some changes to add observability to the JVM memory options. And I'm planning on doing some more analysis on that to understand more clearly how much memory we're using in each build across all of our JVMs. My suspicion is that we may be, uh, there may be some areas that we can optimize uh, our memory usage. For example, depending on how much memory the agents are using, we might be able to turn that down with some explicit configuration. Um, and the other thing that I'm trying to determine is once we understand how much memory we're using, my question is, are we uh, giving ourselves containers that are too small or too big for our actual workload? So I, I don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't quantified every single JVM's heap size. But once I do, I, I want to determine, you know, is this eight gigabyte container uh, VM, is it too large? Is it too small? If it's too large, could we save money by shrinking it to a smaller size? If it's too small, is that why one of could that be one of the reasons why these builds are failing? So these are the, the questions that I'm seeking to answer. I'll, and I'll probably have more of an update on that in the next week or so once I'm able to do some more analysis there. But I I, I think now I finally have all the information that I need to start digging into this. So that's small update there. Um, I'll I'll pause if you had any questions for me about that. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think there's any questions. So the other thing. Yep. Oh. Just to one question: Are you how are you measuring it? Are you always using uh, open telemetry or so your uh, own? Uh... Much, much more primitive than that. I'm just having the JVM print its uh, what it's decided to use with a simple command line flag, and then I have a piece of paper and I'm adding up all of the numbers. So it's really nothing, nothing advanced or sophisticated. 
um, all I'm all I'm doing is looking at the uh, the heap size for each JVM and adding them all up. Um, and uh, in my experience, that's pretty close to the the actual usage. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's not one to one correspondence. There's other there's other factors that are at play, but um, I, I'm not going to dig deeper into those until I know that I need to. For now, just a bit, just a very high level overview is sufficient for me. Um, okay. So, so just before you jump to the next point, then I propose to the whole team, uh, given the help you did and the work you are doing, I propose that we open access for you to two areas, CI Jenkins IO controller, to admin, so we add you uh, to the administrator if it's okay for you, mm -hmm. and to the SSH machine. So, you, so I will open an LDesk issue and mention you because there might be some task on your own to be done, but I will describe them that should allow you to uh, work on the controller itself. And since you're working on the JVM metrics, I propose that we add you as well on the Datadog organization. So you can see the metrics that are sent to Datadog, especially the memory metrics that should help you a lot, I guess. Oh yes, that would be great. I didn't even know we had those, but I'm very, I would be very interested in, in looking at those. That's, yes. that's much better than my primitive uh, command. <laughs> for sure. No, no problem. Uh, just one thing, if you need anything that we, that could help you in the analysis, please shoot and ask. We can give a, a lot of access if needed. We okay. don't have an exhaustive list. That's an improvement for the documentation team. But if you see that you feel uh, completely locked out of the system, please ask us. We can open access, even temporary ones. But if it's easier for you, that will help everyone. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to digging into it some more. Um, so Damien, before before Basel continues, can I ask for a vote there? Hervé, Stefan, Bruno, any objections from you to granting access to ci.jenkins.io? Show of you hands. Have, you have my agree. Okay, great. Agree. Thank you. I'll just record that then. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Great. So the other the other thing that I've been uh, looking at is um, improvements to the pipeline shared library. So you might have seen that I've been refactoring a lot of things. And I'm not just doing that for fun. There's actually a change that I'm working on making that has required some refactoring as a prerequisite. And that is uh, enabling the use of the Maven wrapper, um, which is something that many people have requested in Jenkins core. And uh, instead, of, instead of running the Maven that's installed in the virtual machine or container, many developers would like to run this Maven wrapper instead, which would download a version of Maven that's defined in the repository of the code under test. And so that, for example, that would have helped us in the recent past when we upgraded Maven and found a regression. Um, you know, we had to roll that back at the infrastructure level. But, you know, if we were using the Maven wrapper, we would have been able to roll that back at the application level. Uh, and that might, and the, the reason that that's important for new contributors is that it also applies to local development as well as CI builds. Um, and so in order to um, update the pipeline shared library to support the Maven wrapper, I've been kind of refactoring some of the interfaces in this file, um, infra.groovy, which has a lot of methods that are used when doing checkouts and running Java and running Maven. Um, so I'm hoping to put out a pull request soon that kind of changes some of the semantics of these functions to allow them to be used with a Maven wrapper instead. Um, I still have a little bit more testing to do um, and doing it in a way that preserves backward compatibility is a little bit tricky. So I'm still working on that change, um, but I think I hope to finish that in the next week or so. Um, and that will hopefully uh, make, make it easier for new contributors to start working on Jenkins without having to set up the right version of Maven ahead of time. Even if uh backward change too difficult to obtain. We can also see if we can change or use of it uh, to allow modif easier modification. I, we are the main user of this uh, pipeline library, so. Right, right. We don't yeah. have to be backward compatible. Absolutely, we can see what we, we can do around it. Uh, yeah, we, no, I I've been searching for usages, and if I if I think that they're easy to update, then I'll just I'll simply file a pull request and update the usages if, if necessary. Now, 
this would this buzzle would allow me on the on a, as a plugin maintainer to also eventually use the Maven wrapper so that not just Jenkins core but plugins would come with yeah. the benefit. Yeah, exactly. So the the uh, the there's two consumers of this run Maven function. Uh, well, not just two, but two primary consumers. There's the the build plugin groovy, uh, which is basically the the Jenkins file for all plugins, and then there's the the core Jenkins file. I think those are the two primary consumers. There there are many other smaller consumers as well, um, but the idea behind my change is that the uh, the change would be a generic uh, change to this run Maven function, so such that it would apply to all consumers, including plugins. Okay. So that's interesting. Uh, for, for just for the knowledge transfer, the, we were targeting more and more to focus on only the packer process to generate the element and eventually using the Jenkins integrating tools. Uh, the reason was trying to avoid downloading most of the time Maven on each time, but that will go against the case of, ah, yes, but I don't have that exact version. So having that feature is really useful. We were also trying to work on the uh, ensuring that the tooling used to build uh, come from a trusted source. So I guess that's completely in the same area because pipeline library is something that is trusted. The people committing code there need review, approval, tests. It, it's not perfect, of course. There are always flows, but that's clearly a trusted trusted area. So that's interesting because it's still compliant with that, uh, let's say, security concern to be sure that since it's a public facing system, anyone right. being able to, to jump on that and trying to man in the middle downloads of tooling does not propagate um, suspicious binaries there. I can look into it further and confirm that there's not, a, not any concern. Um, but what I suspect, what I would hope to be the case is that the downloaded uh, that when Maven wrapper downloads Maven, that it would compare the downloaded version with a mm -hmm. checksum that is checked into the Git repository. Yep. That is what I have experienced in the past with the Gradle wrapper. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, I would expect or hope that the same would be true for the Maven one. So I can look into that further and confirm what kind of validation okay. they're doing on the downloaded version of Maven. Okay, there is no need to add one at once because we don't do on the packer images as for today. That's, that's a, a medium term objective we had trying to generalize. So as soon as we know that the Maven version can be, uh, has to be changed if there is a CV or an issue, there are two only location, the template for the agent that should be centralized in upcoming weeks and the pipeline library, that's more than fine for me. That's enough because it's just, we need to be able to know where are the usages and there you already did the job there. So that's really useful. Yeah, I mean, there could be a concern there if this ends up being adopted broadly by plugins, who, by plugin maintainers who decide to use the Maven wrapper, but then decline to keep it up to date. So that would be if 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 that if that happens, then that might be a concern for us. So we might want to discourage them from from using it if we mm -hmm. don't think that they're responsible about updating it. But that that's to, to be fair. That same concern applies to any dependency that's pulled in by a plugin. Yep. So it's not it's not unique to the Maven wrapper. It's just maybe one one example of that. Yes, and that's okay. a good point you're making. That's a fine balance because compared to the amount of time where we broke the usage of the end users by wanting wanting to be up to date, uh, I mean we have to find a balance, and that direction is nice if it fits the users. Many thanks for that. Um, yes. Is it okay if we add a desk issues tracking this information after the meeting and we link them back just for us to be able to have an idea and to be able to track that on the help desk? Is it okay for you, Basil? Uh, yes, that's fine. Many thanks. And Damien, I had one item as well that I, mm -hmm. I tucked into the upper upper section, just a, or are you okay if I bring a topic? Mm -hmm. So, ahead. so, uh, up earlier in the topic in the completed, we've now added a, a C name record to the DNS that is crowd in dot Jenkins dot IO uh, yes. to help us do a more effective job translating Jenkins components uh, into various local languages. So French, German, Italian, Japanese, etc. 
um, Alex Brandis, known as Not My Fault on GitHub, is helping us go through this exercise. We'll do a Jenkins online meetup to show just how much better it is to use this tool to translate than the current process of edit property files manually, suffer terribly, um, <laughs> after a great and enormous pain, finally get your change merged. This is a much, much better way of doing things. And, so, and yes. no, no need to show anything. I just wanted to be sure that the infra team is aware that that we're doing this effort. It's not done yet. It's still very much in prototype phase, right? We've had a few plugins that we've translated. It's working very, very well, but we've got to get the authentication worked out correctly. We've got more changes that need to be done. It just looks very promising. So there is an item. Thanks. That's a good point because I was alone that day. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, we added a, a DNS record to make it better. Uh, there is that ongoing work to, that's really important to, to share it. And I know that there have been an item or request from uh, Alex. He was asking if we had some kind of ACSO to centralize, which we don't. We only have the LDAP for as for today. So the answer is no today. Well, and, and I liked Tim's answer on that. Let's just use GitHub off <laughs> like we do other yeah. places. Let's let's delegate that, delegate that problem to somebody else who... who, who has whole teams, I'm sure, who worry about making that thing work. As soon as GitHub doesn't leak the OAuth token related to now, 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 system. now, yes, yes, yes. Okay, even they are imperfect. <laughs> that was only a, a joke. <laughs> yes. No, no worry, I wasn't serious at all. So, so to Hervé's question, will will plugins will it replace the translation assistance plugin uh, easily and with? with great improvement in experience. Yeah, so now we want, we want testers to tell us because the languages I speak fluently are one and it's already the native language of Jenkins. Therefore, it doesn't help. Whereas those of you who natively speak French or other languages, it's, it'll be a great help. We'd love to have you as part of the test. Yeah, I noticed the, on the dummy plugin, uh, the help us localize this page and uh, so this pop in, uh, this pop up uh, coming in, and uh, yeah, I never saw it before, and I wondered about uh, the crowding integration. I and I don't, I don't know that it, that not, pop up is from no, crowd in. Okay. No, it's the old uh, translation plugin. And, right. Uh, it's in, uh, when you are in dark mode, it's appear completely. Right, and the many thing I think uh, the link is in HTTPS and something like that. I'm not sure it's, yeah. Right, so, so we would love, there will certainly be plenty of places to make that more visible, but given the success of the Hacktoberfest 2021 French translation effort led by Angelique Jard and Duchess France, I think that we've got good candidates to help us do a really good job of making the translation experience much better for Jenkins contributors. Thanks a lot, folks. For and I, I have the action item to schedule a Jenkins online meetup where we'll have invite uh, Alex to come in and others, and we'll have a conversation with developers and contributors about how this works and why it's so much better than, than using property files directly from your editor. That's it for me. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, just a few new items to add to this milestone. We had a request from someone proposing to add a Jenkins mirror in Singapore. So thanks, survey for adding the issue. So that's something that will be treated. Uh, don't know if there are if there is someone motivated. I will add it to the milestone. Anyone interested, uh, uh, assign yourself to the issue, and I will pair with you them. And did we ever get any traction on the Alibaba mirror in China? Never had or did any they, answer. They never them. replied. No, okay, never. so Singapore is another very attractive one because they're close to India, right? Okay. They're, they, they would reduce some of the load on the Tsinghua University servers that are taking just a terrible load from all the, all the downloads in India. So Singapore is very, very interesting to, to share the load on helping the people in India who use Jenkins. Okay, um, but nice thing to reminding us about the Alibaba. It was, it 
was it left my mind uh, to ask them uh, what is the status of their mirror. Um, there has been a request from Ulik about uh, replacing the default display URL from the Jenkins check and notification for CI Jenkins IO. So that developer are not redirected to Blue Ocean, but to the, uh, the usual UI instead. Uh, it's not a request to remove Blue Ocean from CI Jenkins IO. I'm not sure if it's technically possible to. I assume there is a GitHub check setup to be done somewhere. Um, so that's well, something that we should start there working. The, there, there's a Java property that you could set, if I remember from reading the ticket, that would determine which, uh, which UI you would get by default. Oh, cool. OK, so OK, so anyone interested? Uh, so is it OK if we add it to the next milestone? Uh, yes. I mean, that doesn't seem, if it's only a Java or a sitting Java um, property, that should be quite easy to test and apply. Uh, yeah, it's been three or four weeks that Ulik asked for that. So that makes sense in the, given the direction version is taking. Um, what do we have? Then we have the, so the build our own Windows image. So wherever you hope for, for the task for that one. Yes. Uh, change uh, blue ocean link we have to build our own and i think that's already a pretty packed milestone if it's okay for everyone is there other topics you want uh, to add from the this one that we could have forgotten or do you want to work on one two three okay uh, I'm adding one for myself, sunsetting mirrors Jenkins IO, uh, because that one is causing some trouble. So that will be, uh, that's when I started, I need to write on a blog post, that will be hard for me. So I need you to help me review my terrible language, please. <laughs> I need help. Is that all okay for everyone? Is there any other question? Let me stop the recording. Okay.